Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Selby series. Selby is one of 11 subdivisions of the county of North Yorkshire. It's made up of 74 civil parishes, a lot of which are very small. Which one are we in this week? Good morning everybody, welcome to the district of Selby once again. And today you find me in a very small village which has this right at its southern end. That is an old railway bridge or railway viaduct and the line went over the top of it. And there's a path at the side of it. I'm hoping you can get up on top of that because I imagine the view from the top will be quite good. We'll see as we uh, explore the parish of Stutton with Hazelwood. This Selby episode is sponsored by Past Days, a family history blog by June Terrington. You'll find a link in the description. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Welcome to Stutton with Hazelwood, a parish which sits just to the south of Tadcaster in the district of Selby. It comprises the main village of Stutton and the impressive Hazelwood Castle. This is a tract of land with an ancient history. It lies in the valley of the Cock Beck, which discharges into the River Wharf one mile to the east of Stutton. Stutton was likely founded by a Viking settler named Stufi in the late 9th century. Until the 1960s and 1970s, it remained a small hamlet until some major residential developments came along. For much of its existence, Stutton was owned by the Vavasor family of Hazelwood Castle as part of the Stutton cum Hazelwood estate. The castle is now a hotel and spa. The land the village sits upon is famed for limestone, which has been quarried here since Roman times. It's been used in the construction of many local properties, as well as York Minster. Traditionally, villagers made a living working in agriculture. Stutton has productive soils, which overlie the limestone. Through time, industry in the village would change, and we'll see how as we walk around. The modern Stutton village is probably the largest it's ever been in its history, but still remains something of a peaceful oasis, despite being so close to Tadcaster and the busy A64. There are landmarks aplenty, a lot of which are railway related. Let's get moving and find them all. To kick things off here, let's get Hazelwood Castle out of the way first. Hazelwood Castle is a country residence which is used now as a hotel. It's one of the oldest fortified houses to survive in the whole of Yorkshire. It's located off the A64. This road is North Approach, the road you use to access it. The castle is surrounded by a thick, dense woodland and it stands on an eminence overlooking the Towton battlefield. It was historically owned and occupied by Sir Morga the Vavasaur. Hazelwood was inhabited by descendants of the Vavasaurs for over 900 years. In 1217, a statue of Robert Vavasaur was placed above the door of York Minster, recognising the fact that he gave stone from his Tadcaster quarry to maintain the cathedral. In 1908, the Vavasaur family sold Hazelwood and moved to New Zealand. Ownership of the site changed hands many times over the following years, and it's seen many uses, even serving as a maternity hospital during World War II and for a period shortly afterwards. 
For a few years, it then belonged to the Fawcett family until it was sold in 1958 to Donald Hart, who sold it on as a retreat for the Carmelite Friars in 1971. At the time of that sale, it was given its current Grade 1 listing. In 1997, after restoration, the house reopened as Hazelwood Castle Hotel, Restaurant and Café and Cookery School, until in 2008 it was purchased by the Ashdale Hotels Group. Ever since, it's been a successful wedding venue and hotel. If Hazelwood has one downside, it would be that you can only access it from the A64 westbound, and that means when you leave the hotel, you have to travel towards Leeds. Not helpful when Stutton is located to the east. Mind you, roundabouts are wonderful inventions, and luckily the A64's junction with the A1M is literally less than a mile away. This gives me a chance to talk about the junction known as Bramham Interchange. On the A1M, the junction number is 44, and most of it falls within Stutton's boundaries. It's a vitally important link from the A1 to Tadcaster, York, and the East Coast, and so many of my videos have been made after passing through it. Looks like I'll have to do so again. So to Stutton, and first let's talk about that bridge. This three-arched stone structure used to carry the Harrogate to Church Fenton railway line, the course of which flanks the village to the west. We've mentioned bits of this in the past. Construction of the railway took place between 1845 and 1847, and Stutton Station probably opened with the line at the same time, although there's no written confirmation of that. The station first appeared in company timetables in July 1848. In 1964, the whole line was closed to passenger traffic, and in 1966, the track was lifted as part of the Beeching era railway closures. The last time we came across this line, by the way, was in Thorpe Arch, where its route has been turned now into a cycle trail. Here, it's not the same story. This is very much abandoned, and you can't walk on top of these arches. However, one of them is still used, apparently, by the house which sits next door. How about that for a garden shed, eh? So let's take a wander into Stutton then. This is not very big. It'll take me about half an hour to walk around it. It's a nice circular route as well. At the top of the route, before we come back down, there's uh, the old station house. So we'll catch that uh, on our walk around. Should be a nice, pleasant little morning stroll, this one. So uh, yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to this one. This would appear to be some kind of water pumping station or pump house on Green Lane. It's not greatly interesting, but handily it does highlight the importance of water to Stutton, lying as it does in the valley of the Cock Beck. Close to the Cock Beck, a marshy area once contained many willow groves. Like many other Selby villages, willow harvesting, drying and stripping was a cottage industry here until the 1930s. The long straight willow stems were used for basket making. Here's the village hall. This is where the parish council currently meets, although prior to the construction of this building in 1960, meetings took place in the waiting room of Stutton Railway Station, which was also used as the local polling station too. That's got to be one of the most unconventional uses for a railway station I've ever come across. Here's the parish notice board, which is right outside. Mark it off folks, four left in Selby. So in the corner here in the village hall, there's uh, a memorial. This is, uh, here we go, a war memorial it looks like. Yeah, he mentions conflict, remembering family and friends and our brave souls lost in times of conflict, never forgotten. That's nice, that's nice. Now also here, there's a book exchange, which I'll film from here because I think this is a good vantage point. There we go. And my route now will take me this way, past the phone box, towards the Hare and Hounds pub next. That's the next landmark. It's this building right here. Here we have the one and only public house in Stutton, the Hare and Hounds. Rather unsurprisingly, given that we're on the edge of Tadcaster, the pub has an association with Samuel Smith's Brewery. Above the door, there's a date stone. This was a little hard to read, but I think it says 1730. To what this refers to, I don't know, but it cannot be the date of the building, as some of its original beams are known to date back to 1711. It's said that part of the building is haunted by a soldier from the Battle of Towton. Now we've moved onto the corner of Mill Lane, where there's a small green, and here we encounter a tree planted as part of the Queen's Green Canopy Initiative. 
This is a nationwide project that marked the Lake Monarch's Platinum Jubilee. Charles III has now extended the scheme until March 2023 to give people the opportunity to plant trees in memoriam to honour the Queen. So now we're on Weedling Gate and this is apparently where you can catch a bus out here in Stutton. Let's see what services we've got. New service, 492 Weatherby Tadcaster Sherburn from Monday the 7th of September. So it's quite a, a recent service this then. There you go, there's the 492 and these are all the places it uh, calls. We've seen some of those before haven't we? A couple we haven't but uh, we will, we will eventually. Here we're overlooking what I thought might possibly have been a set of earthworks. It turned out to be nothing evidently, although Wingate Hill nearby to the village is said to have been the site of the Saxon court for the West Riding. Now we come to Church Lane and despite the name there's no church on here. Stutton no longer has one, but it used to have a late 19th century mission church made of wood, St Aidan's, which was deconsecrated in the early 2000s. Now we're walking away from Stutton Village. At the end of Church Lane, we hit the former route of the Harrogate to Church Fenton railway line, and this runs as a public footpath from the village into Tadcaster. This wasn't part of my original route, but I opted to include this because I'd seen something of interest on the map. On the way, we pass through this subway tunnel, which takes the route of the old railway line under the A64. So you might be thinking at this point, why am I walking up this path towards Tadcaster away from Stutton? Well, I'm actually not walking away from Stutton because I'm still in it. Beyond this subway tunnel, there's a housing estate which is part of Tadcaster, but it falls within Stutton uh, with Hazelwood's boundaries. It's a very tiny bit which still falls within Stutton. Strange, I don't know why, it's just the way the boundaries are. Um, I imagine it's a new estate and probably been built um, after the boundaries were defined, so uh, we'll see. I'm going to walk through it and then we're going to walk down uh, Stutton Road because there's a landmark I'd like to catch uh, over to the west. Yeah, I think it's west, yeah. Um, which uh, hopefully I'll be able to see from a road bridge. Not quite sure if I'll be able to see it or not, but uh, we're soon going to find out. Well, as educated guesses go, that was a good one. We emerge on Hawthorne Close, and I won't say this is brand new, but even so, it's part of a newish housing estate. There's not really much to say about this area. I guess, therefore, I can take this opportunity to mention Jackdaw Crag Quarry, which isn't far from here. In fact, it's only a few hundred metres away. It's a famous quarry, well known for providing the crushed rock for the construction of the A1 motorway. Other than Tadcaster's breweries, quarrying is what this part of Selby is most famed for. However, both Tadcaster and Stutton had windmills in times gone by. On the other side of Stutton Road, there's a road by the name of Windmill Rise. The landmark I was wanting to catch was Tadcaster Windmill, which sits on the side of the large man-made cutting where the A64 now runs through. I was hoping to view it from the road bridge, but as you can see, it's obscured by trees. So very quickly around Tadcaster, you'll find this in other places around it as well. Uh, it can change from very urban to very rural. Obviously you've just seen how urban Tadcaster can be and now I'm on this road here where there's absolutely nobody, nothing. All I can hear really is uh, the sound of birds tweeting in the trees and the bushes and the sky. Sun's up, beautiful countryside. That's just Selby to a T really, isn't it? Anyway, let's walk back into uh, Stutton Village. It's about a quarter of a mile or so down here. And then head down Church Crescent, which will take us back to the beginning. The old station now. This was designed by the famous railway architect George Townsend Andrews, a close associate of George Hudson, the railway king. The station closed in 1905, although holiday charters continued to call here until the 1960s. Next is the former St Aidan's Church. I have a question at this point. Stutton Locals, is this the original building? I ask because I found a 2014 article linked below stating that this was to be demolished. Either way, a house now stands on the site. Remember how we said industry in the village changed over time? As we make our way back to the start, we pass Malt Kiln Terrace. Stutton once had a large purpose-built maltings, which likely worked hand-in-hand -hand with the breweries in Tadcaster. 
Finally, just before we go back up Green Lane towards the car to complete the route, I want to draw your attention to this house on the corner of Manor Road. Certainly one of the village's prettiest. This is the Owl House. I guess it's pretty obvious how it gets its name. Here's the owl. Look at those beady eyes. <laughs> Even though it's not a real one, they still stare a hole through you. That's brilliant. Okay, that is Stutton. And with it, whoop, let's go out of the way of the scout. <laughs> Sorry. And with it, the parish of Stutton with Hazelwood just leaves me with today's picture bit to introduce for you. And that's coming your way right now. Okay, that's taken me about an hour with the little detour that I did up into Tadcaster to catch that estate and attempt to catch the windmill. I know I couldn't catch it properly because it was behind the trees, but at least you know where it is. And that, my friends, is Stutton with Hazelwood complete. And it's time for me to move on to my next one here in Selby. We've only got four left now, so uh, we're frighteningly close to the end of the series. It's good though. It really is good because it means I can move on to York, which is coming after the end of the Selby series. Uh, okay, I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot. This has been the parish of Stutton with Hazelwood, and I'm out. Thank you.